Hello, everybody. This is Eric White. Today, I'm embarking on a fairly ambitious project. I want to teach how to write pure functional transforms using C Sharp or JavaScript. Over the years, I've written an awful lot of code for OpenXML. I've written code that went into the power tools for OpenXML, and I've written a bunch of other code. And for most of this code, I've used functional programming, and more specifically, I've used a technique called recursive pure functional transforms. This is a tutorial on how to write those recursive pure functional transforms. There's going to be a fair number of screencasts in this series. I'm not exactly sure how many. Some of the screencasts will be quite short. I think some of them may be as short as three or five minutes long, and some will certainly probably be longer than that, up to 15 minutes long. But all told, this series is going to teach you how to write pure functional transforms. This is an incredibly powerful technique. Pure functional transforms enable you to write code such as a transform of OpenXML word processing ML to HTML. I've also written code to accept tracked revisions in OpenXML documents. I've also written markup simplifiers and a whole bunch of other examples. And many of my examples use this approach of recursive pure functional transforms. Let me show you some examples of code that has been written using pure functional transforms. Let's start with examining the transform of a Word document to HTML. Let's take a look at this Word document. Here's a fairly simple Word document, but it actually uses a fair number of features. You can see that it has an image in the document. You can see here there's a hyperlink. There's a table in the document. There is text styled as heading one and a, as a subheading. Below that, I have a bulleted list, a numbered list, and a somewhat more elaborate list. Let's close this document. And here I'm in Power Tools for OpenXML, and I'm going to run the example that converts that word processing document to HTML. And there it ran, and now if I come back to that same directory, I can see that I now have this file test.html, and if I open it, you can see that it creates an HTML document that is very similar to that word processing document. The image is transformed properly. There's the table. There's a bulleted list, a numbered list, and the more elaborate list. Let's take a look at the markup for the word processing document, and then we'll take a look at the HTML and see the differences in the markup languages and how powerful this approach of doing a pure functional transform is. I'm going to drag test.docx onto Visual Studio 2010 and take a look at this document in the OpenXML Package Editor Power Tool for Visual Studio 2010. I've talked about this tool quite a bit. If you're not familiar with it, you certainly should be. It's one of the most valuable tools that you have in your toolbox as an OpenXML developer. So I drag it over onto Visual Studio, and it gives me this hierarchy of the components of this OpenXML document. If I expand this Word folder, then I can see document.xml. This is the main document part. I'll open that. And I'll format the XML so that we can take a look at it. And when we look at this XML, we can see a lot of features of this XML. There is, for instance, some RSID attributes, we can see that there's a paragraph that contains a run, that contains text elements, and the text elements contain the text of the various paragraphs. Below that, we can see some fairly elaborate markup for the positioning and display of the image. 
And below that, we can see some markup for the hyperlink. We can see some markup for the table. This is standard word processing ML markup that we find in OpenXML. If we drop down to the bottom, I can see some paragraphs that have paragraph properties in them, that have the numPR element in them. This means that those paragraphs are part of a numbered list. So this is, you know, fairly elaborate OpenXML word processing ML markup. Let's take a look at the HTML. Here we can see the HTML markup that was generated by the HTML converter. And in this HTML markup, we can see the various artifacts that are associated with HTML. In other words, that it has a root element of HTML, it has a head element, it has a body element, it has paragraph elements. Here we can see the image element that the fairly elaborate word processing ML markup was transformed into. We can see the HTML table. And if we drop down to the bottom, we can see the paragraphs that comprise the rest of the document. There is a bulleted list that uses the ampersand B-U-L-L -L, semicolon entity. And we can see the more elaborate numbered lists below that. So the question is, how do we write a transform that takes you from that fairly complicated word processing ML into this markup and does it in the most reliable, robust, and performant means possible? Let's take a look at another example. Here we have an OpenXML document that has some interesting artifacts. This is a document that has been modified with track changes turned on. And in this document, there has been a comment inserted. Here you can see some text that was deleted and some text that was inserted. And down here in this table, you can see that the first two rows of this table have been deleted. Let's go take a look at that markup. I'm going to drag this document onto Visual Studio and take a look at it in the OpenXML Package Editor Power Tool. I'm going to look at the main document part again. And in this main document part, we can see some interesting pieces of markup. We can see the comment range start. We can see the comment range end. Below that, we can see some deleted text. Here, this entire run has been deleted. We can also see some inserted text, an inserted run right there. And down here, we can see this TR element. That is the table row element. And within that table row element, there is a table row properties element. That's this TRPR element. And in the table row properties element, there is a W colon DEL element. And this indicates that that entire row was deleted with track changes turned on. I'm going to close this without saving it because all I did was format the markup. Now I'm going to run a small example program that is part of Power Tools for OpenXML. And in this example program, I'm going to tell it I want to remove comments. I want to remove RSID info. I'll tell it I want to remove proofing errors, any last rendered page breaks. And I'm going to apply this to my document that had those tracked revisions and so on. Now let's take a look at that document. And we can see that the comment has been removed, those tracked changes have been accepted, and those two deleted rows have been removed. And so now we have a document that has no tracked changes in that document. Let's go take a look at that markup now.
Well, the first thing that we can see is that entire first paragraph has been reduced to a single P element that contains a single R element that contains a single T element. So that markup has been made as simple as it possibly could be made. And here we can see the table element and the table properties element. And we only see the table rows that remain in that table. Here is a fairly simple example that shows a recursive pure functional transform. We can note a couple of things about this transform. It's kind of coded in an interesting way. It returns object, and we don't know exactly why that is. Another thing that we can see down here is there are these lambda expressions down in the middle of the doc. We have something like a such that a dot name is not equal to w dot rsid and a dot name is not equal to w dot rsid del and so on and so forth. And down here we can see this select where inside the select we recursively call remove rsid transform. And how does all of this work? This is just a small amount of code, but this small amount of code goes into an entire word processing document and removes all of those RSID elements and attributes that we don't want to see. So how does this work? That's going to be the topic of this series of screencasts. So what do we gain when we do pure functional programming? Once you understand how to write these varieties of transforms. First of all, it speeds up your development. Second of all, it makes it far easier to debug. Tough problems become easier, and extremely difficult problems sometimes only become tough problems. It takes a fair amount of study to learn about and understand at its depth functional programming and recursive pure functional transforms, but if you will take the time to learn this, I promise you it will be worth it. You'll be able to write interesting code in ways that you never thought you could before. Further, you'll be able to leverage the work that we've done in Power Tools for OpenXML. You'll be able to modify code and make code do something different than what the Power Tools examples do. And finally, you're going to have an awful lot of fun. It's a fun way to code. It's very powerful. That's all I'm going to cover in this screencast. In the next screencast, I am going to talk a bit more about what the main scenarios are for recursive pure functional transforms. Talk to you next time.